model and an activist who flew across the pond to be with us today. Would you please welcome the beautiful Elizabeth Hurley. <laughs> Elizabeth, I was sitting here talking about Heidi Klum and her dogs. I am my dog. You have four dogs. I do. Okay, so tell me how you do your dogs, girl. Well, I have Shivraj, Mia, Ava, and Minnie. And Minnie. Okay. And Minnie I bred during lockdown. She's a little working Cocker Spaniel, and she was actually the runt of the litter. Really? And, of course, she was the one I had to keep. She's tiny. She's tiny. Black. Beautiful. Does I she love sleep her. in the bed with you? No, none of them do, actually. None of them do. <laughs> okay, so you may you may be taking my cereal type off. Do, do you let the dog's tissue in the mouth, girl? Do you know what? I don't <laughs> She's like, I'm gonna talk about it. <laughs> but you love your babies. I love them. They're like your children. They are. I don't encourage <laughs> licking. But they're, they're, they lick, they're, but I snuggle them. Yes. I love them. Yes, that's I what you have them. to do. You love them. And they will love you back. I swear I love dogs. Yeah. Now, I have to tell you, I, you, you have been a sex symbol for 30 years, Elizabeth. <laughs> and, and honey, and I got to tell you, I remember to the day when you were on the red carpet and you wore this Versace dress with the, with the pins on it. You broke the internet. The, do you still have this dress? What happened with this dress? You know, I gave that dress back the day after I wore it. Really? Yeah, but it's, it's, it's a famous dress now, and it's been in... It's had its own exhibitions. Nothing to do with me, <laughs> but it's been, in, it's been in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. It's been in the Victoria and Albert Museum. And it's part of fashion, which is, again, nothing to do with me. Oh, but, my... Um, did you know that, that something like this would have happened when no. you got on the red carpet? No, because when I borrowed it, neither me or my then-boyfriend, Hugh, were um, really very well-known at all. <laughs> and I didn't have any clothes. We lived in a tiny little one-bedroom walk-up apartment. And I was like, I've got to wear something. And somebody said, I know, I know someone who reps some Italian brand. I'd never heard of Versace. Yeah. And I went round, and they had one dress, that dress. They put it in a white shopping bag, and I took it home. I didn't own a steamer. I didn't have a full-length mirror. Oh, my... I never God. saw it, actually. Right. I only saw it to here. So, until I saw it in the papers. It's and quite look, weird. Well, this... Speaking of... <laughs> <laughs> it looked amazing, in it? Now, speaking of that guy named Hugh Grant... <laughs> You, you, I love the relationship that you had with Hugh Grant. I, like, live vicariously through you, too. And you are really good friends with him. He is the godfather of your son, Damien. He is, yeah, he is. Yes? And I'm godmother. Yes? I'm godmother to his eldest child, too. Really? Now, I mean, you got to tell me this, because I, the secret to staying friends with an ex, because I'm always with my exes, I'm in court all the time. So you got <laughs> you to let me know. What is the secret for staying friends after you break up? Because you guys are really close. Well, I think it was because we became family. And is so... Is that what it is? Yeah, I think we were, we were really good friends. And uh -huh. family, we, we sort of became famous at the same time. We did all those battles at the beginning. We had no money. Suddenly, we were working. You know, we didn't have any assistance. It was just us and, in those days, an answer machine. And then suddenly we had an office together. We went through a lot. And I think when you have that sort of bond, it's, it would be inconceivable for me not to be his best friend. OK, all right, I'm taking that in. Now, the other thing I was excited to know when you came here. Now, my son is 17 years old. Damien, your son, is 20 years old. What am I in for? Look at this cutie right here. This is Damien. <laughs> First of all, he looks like your boyfriend right here. Yeah. <clears throat> 20 years old. <laughs> Tell me what you got to go through. What do I got to go through? Well, I think, I think you've been through the worst. I think the okay. worst for boys is when they hit puberty. Yeah. You know, when they're 13, 14, 15, there's a... I didn't realise... There's a lot of changes to men. Yeah. More than I realised. Mm -hmm. You know, women, we have, you know, we have bodily changes, but we look the same, we sound the same. Yeah. We just get a little bigger. Guys, I, I didn't realise till I went through it with him, it, it's a huge change. Suddenly, we expect them to be men. We're suddenly saying, open the door, stand up, she's come in the room, take that lady's bag, and they're, 
get, it's, we've really changed things for them. Yes. They suddenly have to really step up and then hopefully they've stepped up. Uh -huh. Has your stepped up? <laughs> he said that will he I take your bag it's a, it, well I told him to hold the door open for the women and, and one time it was a bunch of women coming in and he was like ugh how long is this gonna be <laughs> so he's trying to step up he's like women just coming <laughs> but you but he looks he, you guys do I, you have just one I just have the one isn't it heaven it's, oh, it's yeah. so much heaven. I love them, but you know they grow up and I'm trying to get to that so I'm glad you gave me that advice oh that, that you gave me <laughs> and you it's so funny, you've worked so much. You have such a body of work. You did the movie Be Dazzled with Brendan Fraser. Yes. And then you got to, he's having a resurgence yes, with his is. movie The Whale, and you got to reunite with Brendan. How was that? Do you know what? It was amazing. I mean, we loved each other when we worked together, but yeah. it was 20 years ago. And we, our paths had just never crossed, but I remember when we made Bedazzle together, he gave me this little, this little silver bell, which he'd had engraved for me, and I kept it on my dining room table. And every time I eat, I see it. It's <laughs> right in front of me. So I felt that I'd known him all this time. And then for him to suddenly sort of step forth again and be recognized, it, it was just fabulous. And he's, you know, he's had battles himself over the years, and he's phenomenal in the film. Oh, I mean, just my phenomenal. goodness. <laughs> Yeah, that's a movie I'm really looking oh, forward to seeing. It's disturbing. This is why, you know, it has been uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and we've been talking to people in our audience who are survivors. And you do amazing work with Estee Lauder's Breast Cancer Awareness Campaign. Can you tell us about that? Yes, of course, I'd love to. Well, I've been doing it for 27 years. I've been the global ambassador for the Estee Lauder's Breast Cancer Campaign, and I've been all around the world raising funds and awareness of breast cancer. Mm -hmm. And it's been sort of an extraordinary journey because when I started, we didn't talk about breast cancer out loud. Mm -hmm. And that's really why this campaign was started and why Evelyn Lauder co-created the Pink Ribbon because nobody spoke about breast cancer. And she said to me, women are dying all over the world. No one is talking about it and there's not enough funding for research yeah. so that we can cure this disease. So she started the Breast Cancer Research Foundation and we started our campaign at Estee Lauder. And we've raised $118 million oh, for really? breast cancer. Yeah. Wow. And, um, and she always said that we're gonna beat this disease through research, so we need money. And in fact, I'm about to go and meet more than 200 of our research scientists in a minute for lunch and they're gonna tell us what they've achieved over in the last yes. year. Because they have made unbelievable strides in diagnosis, in treatment, but still women are dying. One in eight of us will be diagnosed in our lifetime with breast cancer. And you know, we're not gonna stop until that statistic is over and nobody dies of breast cancer. Yes. <laughs> so mama, Elizabeth, when you're not running around being, you know, godmother to Hugh Grant's child and, <laughs> and, you know, having fun with Damien and with your dogs and raising so much money for breast cancer awareness, the research, are there any hobbies? Do you, I heard you like to make a marmalade jam. I make marmalade. You do? And jam, yes. How do you, okay. I love it. It's, no, is it two different things, marmalade yes. and jam? Yes. Okay. All right, you, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> it is. Well... Jam is much sweeter, and I make Seville orange marmalade, which are only Ooh. from Seville oranges, which in England we only get in January. Really? So you have to be first to the shops and buy as many as you can, because they're these special bitter, they're disgusting, you can't eat them. Okay, but and, you make the... Oh, it's so delicious, yeah. And I make enough for a year in January. So you have it, do you give away the, the little, uh, the jars as gifts during the holidays? I know I ought to. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was just saying, you make it sound so good. I was hoping that you could send some, some from England I will. over here. Would you send okay, me some that of That I will, I will. And it's a funny thing because I make lots of jam because we've got a lot of fruit in our garden. So I'm yeah. always picking blackberries or strawberries and I make a lot. And it, I don't hoard anything. And I like to consider myself generous, but I'm not very generous with my homemade jam. Okay. I don't, but I'll give you some. So you heard it here, Elizabeth Hurley, who's not generous with her jam, <laughs> will be generous with her jam <laughs> over here. <laughs> Elizabeth, I thank you so much for coming. I know you got a lot of stuff to do. It was a long trip you made. And thank you for coming here and stopping by the Sherry Show. Thank you very much.